Super Mario Galaxy, released in November 2007, takes Mario to the next level. He's explored weird worlds inside paintings and gone on an adventure to a tropical island. But now, now, Mario's going to space! <laughs> Stories have never been important in mainline Mario games. Sure, some of them can be interesting and decently thought out, like Super Mario Sunshine, but the main goal of these games has never been to tell a story. Super Mario Galaxy, however, completely ignores this and creates one of the most cinematic and well-created Mario stories of all time. And to help further immerse the player in this game, Mario would receive its fully first orchestrated game ever, and boy did they not disappoint! Super Mario Galaxy starts off with the introduction of the Star Festival. A festival held every 100 years to celebrate a comet that fills the sky with shooting stars. Princess Peach invites Mario over to celebrate the event with her, and we finally gain control of Mario. In this area, the player gets to become familiar with how Mario controls in this game, and we're introduced to the Star Cursor, which in the original Mario Galaxy would use the Wiimote's motion sensor to point the controller at the screen to be able to collect star bits, and in the Switch port would make use of the gyroscope and the Joy-Cons and Pro Controller. I've probably played through this opening sequence dozens of times and it's never gotten old. The elegant music, the cheerful sounds of toes, the shooting stars falling from the sky, combine to create a beautiful opening scene that would make anybody smile. But as you probably expected, once the player has gotten a little used to the controls and has progressed into the town, meteors start crashing from the sky and causing the entire Mushroom Kingdom to panic. Buildings start to fall over and crash to the ground and we see Mario running in fear as he sees his toad friends being frozen in crystals. Mario looks up to notice that a fleet of airships sporting Bowser's flags have invaded and ruined the festival. The airships start to surround the castle and Mario has to rush to the town dodging meteors and avoiding obstacles to try to get to the castle in time to stop Bowser. A UFO starts to pull up the castle into the sky with Mario and Peach on it, but unfortunately before he could get to Peach, Mario is stopped by Kamek, who shoots a burst of magic from his wand, sending Mario flying off into space screaming. After this, Mario has to venture across the entire universe collecting power stars and bringing peace to different galaxies to try to collect enough power stars to venture to the center of the universe to thwart Bowser's plans. The story isn't the only highlight of the game either. The levels themselves are a masterpiece of their own. The creativity and love put into these levels are extremely apparent as every level in this game has their own identity that makes them different from each other. Unbound by the restrictions they faced in Sunshine of every level having to be tropical and vacation themed, Galaxy is able to deliver such an extensive range of worlds and planets because, well, it's space. Anything is possible. The first galaxy of this game, Gateway Galaxy, sends Mario right into the action as soon as he gains access to the star spin. This game's star mechanic. Being pushed forward by the epic orchestral music, Mario flies through space across many different planets until eventually finding the planet in which the Grand Star is being held. And after freeing and collecting it, Mario is guided by the Grand Star to the Comic Observatory, the hub world of this epic space adventure where he meets Rosalina. When you first visit the Comet Observatory, the music playing is very calming and relaxing. But as you progress further and further in the story, the music starts to change, adding more and more instruments as you continue playing. Here's the second rendition of the song. And finally last, but certainly not least, the final rendition of this song, and in my opinion, the best rendition.
The Common Observatory provides a much appreciated break from the insane galactic adventure you partake on in this game. I fondly remember about 11 years ago when I first started playing this game, instead of continuing and collecting more stars and unlocking more galaxies, sometimes I would just wander around the observatory, seeing the places I hadn't unlocked yet, constantly falling off trying to do cool jumps, and overall just being at peace. But that's not to say that every galaxy in this game is some insane galactic adventure featuring breathtaking orchestral pieces. Oh no 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 no. Plenty of galaxies in this game have a way more laid back and relaxing vibe to them. Take for instance, Beach Bowl Galaxy. The second you arrive in this galaxy and hear the music, you know what you're in for. Beach Bowl has always been one of my favorite galaxies because I love just swinging around on this one vine and spinning around and seeing how far I could send Mario flying. Along with that, after noticing that the music would change when Mario went underwater, I would constantly go in and out of the water just to hear it change. Yeah, I was, I was very easily entertained. Anyway, enough with the chill and laid back vibes of this game, let's get back into the action! Boss fights in Mario games are not anything new. They've been in the game since the very first installment all the way back in 1985, and in Super Mario Galaxy, the boss fights have never been any better. I'm not going to go over every single one because there's 23 of them, but I just want to take a minute to talk about some of the major ones. Mega Leg. After collecting your first 8 power stars, you unlock the first major boss fight of this game. In this battle, you're put up against a giant two-legged robot who shoots bullet bills at you as you try to scale the robot's giant body, and you have to guide the bullet bills into shooting the glass that the Grand Star is being kept in. This boss fight isn't necessarily hard in any way, but I always loved the idea of climbing and destroying the robot. As a kid, I used to replay this boss over and over again. I loved trying to see how fast I could complete it, and I loved scaling and walking around the giant robot. It felt like I was in a movie. Then there's the first Bowser level. And when I played this and initially heard the music playing, I was astonished. It was the same music that played on the Bowser levels in Mario 64. And to younger me, that was insane. And the level itself even reminded me of Mario 64. A linear platforming gauntlet filled with fireballs, enemies, and all sorts of things to kill Mario. Now yeah, the level itself is great, but then you get to the Bowser fight and it's like, oh my god! I cannot get over the Bowser fights in this game, they are amazing! The music on its own is incredible, but once you get Bowser to hit the lava, and he starts running around and the choir kicks in, this stuff feels like it's right out of a movie as you chase him around the small little planet, dodging his fireballs and send him spinning around the entire planet at insane speeds just for you to hit him the last time and send him out of the orbit of the planet to defeat him. Super Mario Galaxy features hands down the most fun, cinematic, and satisfying Bowser fights in any of the mainline games. The fight with Bowser Jr. is nothing to scoff at either. To even get to the battle arena, you have to journey across tons of airships filled with enemies and fly in a mini airship dodging cannonballs shooting at you and spiders dropping down from above. The fight itself sees the player chucking shells at Bowser Jr.'s airship as he browses you with fireballs, bullet bills, and magic koopas. With the music picking up and getting faster as you get closer to finally defeating him. Super Mario Galaxy's major boss fights never see a single dull point. There's never more than a single moment where you're standing there and waiting to find out what to do next. You're either dodging attacks or attacking them yourself. The music is always perfect as well picking up when it needs to pick up, and dropping off when it needs to drop off. And that's not just the case for the boss fights either. Each galaxy features music that perfectly suits it in the type of adventure that that galaxy is taking you on. Take for instance, Gusty Garden Galaxy. It's a bright and colorful place full of flowers and greenery. A galaxy in which we see Mario fly through the sky using dandelions being guided by the wind which propel him to the next planet. The music is triumphant, adventurous, and fun. Battle Rock Galaxy. Unlike Gusty Garden, Battle Rock is not bright and colorful, it's gloomy and dark. A place which seemed to be once the location of many battles which has now been taken over by Bowser. Now filled with cannons, lasers, and tons of enemies. The music reflects this, with an epic piece reminding the player that they're in a war with Bowser and must do everything to stop him. The music almost feels like it could be in Star Wars, the perfect music for a galactic war.
Space Junk Galaxy. It's not a galaxy that seemed to be the site of battles long ago, nor is it a galaxy filled with greenery, flowers, and a bright sky. Space Junk Galaxy feels empty, a galaxy filled with trash. It's not a grand adventure. You don't fly through the sky on dandelions with gusts of wind pushing you forward. Instead, you go at your own pace, using the pull stars to progress further until you finally reach your desired destination. The music is slow and empty. Cinematic. It's not a word I think many relate to the Mario series with. I mean, why would you? It's Super Mario we're talking about. This guy rides dinosaurs and eats mushrooms. But as I've stated before in this video and even in the title of this video, Super Mario Galaxy is different. It's not a traditional type of Mario game. It's a game loved not just because of its gameplay, but because of its music. It was the first fully orchestrated Mario game but most importantly, it's story. Anytime I hear someone explain why Super Mario Galaxy is their favorite Mario game or even favorite game in general, they always, in at least some capacity, mention the story and the cinematics. But there's always one thing they always make sure to emphasize their love for, the final level. Unlike all of the other Bowser and Bowser Jr. galaxies in this game, instead of going in a level selector and getting there via launch star, the final level starts off with this cool-ass cutscene of Rosalina using the power of the stars you've collected to propel the Comet Observatory to the center of the universe. You fly through this war zone filled with dozens of Bowser ships and the castle in the center of it all. Mario runs across the bridge created by Rosalina and you're tasked with making your way through the perilous path filled with platforming challenges the game has been preparing you for since the very beginning with the climax of the platforming challenges being a giant lava cylinder filled with tons of bullet bills and thwomps. After making your way through the bullet hell, you finally see the princess for the first time since the very beginning of the game. You run up a slowly crumbling staircase as you're being pelted with meteors trying to halt your progress, until you finally reach Bowser and start your final battle with him. The first phase being on a planet with prickly plants that damage Mario if he gets close. Bowser uses his powers to turn himself into a giant rock in order to flatten Mario. After finding his weak point and hitting him a few times, you fly closer to the center of the universe and face Bowser on a planet filled with these small green things. After Bowser realizes his flaws with the rock form, he decides this time to just use his entire shell and hurls himself at Mario with his spiky shell in order to try to take him down once and for all. Mario uses his star spin in order to fling the green things at Bowser in order to stun him. After hitting him a few times, they once again fall to a different planet. This time, they're battling on top of Bowser's galaxy reactor. The music ramps up as the fights continue, with Mario eventually hitting Bowser for the last time as we see him plummet to his supposed death in a giant pool of lava. After this, Bowser's galaxy reactor explodes and creates a black hole capable of destroying the entire universe. They're only saved by the Luma sacrificing their lives and creating a brand new Big Bang. Super Mario Galaxy absolutely flips the Mario formula on its head, not only with the gameplay and the fact that Mario is in space, but the cinematic aspects of the whole series. Super Mario Sunshine started the trend with fully voice acted cutscenes and Super Mario Galaxy continued and improved it in so many ways. The entire adventure feels like it'd be in a movie, as I've stated many times. The music is absolutely beautiful, the visuals at the time were some of the best that we had to offer, and helped create memories that so many people will cherish for the rest of their lives. 
And hey, Galaxy may not be my favorite game of all time, nor my favorite Mario game of all time, but what I do know is, is that Super Mario Galaxy is a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs>